If you're into electronics, you've got to have a multimeter. The basic ones measure ohms, voltage and current. That's fine for simple electrical circuits. But if you want to go seriously into electronics, you also want to be able to measure capacitance and inductors. The better multimeters have capacitance and often also inductance built in. But their accuracy and range isn't necessarily ideal, especially if you experiment with radio circuits. That's because radio circuits often require low values of capacitance and inductance, down to one picofarad or less for capacitance, and less than one microhenry for inductance. If you're seriously into that, you probably need a dedicated instrument, such as an LCR meter. This one from Peak Electronic Design is the LCR45 manufactured in England. It's intended to test components in isolation. That is, you need to take the part out of the circuit board. If you don't, there's a risk of interaction with other parts and stray voltages, which could damage the instrument. The LCR45 costs around $100 US with the exact prices on the Soda Beam's website. Straight out of the box, I haven't read the manual. Let's see how the LCR45 goes with this box of parts. First of all, we'll try the simplest components, resistors. 2.2 ohm on the body, the meter reads 2.21. Got another resistor here, 8.2K according to the color code, and yep, well within tolerance. Now here we've got a small capacitor. Notice how the capacitor value is dropping. About, anyway, 5.2. It's got an auto power off, which is handy. That should mean that your batteries don't accidentally discharge. Anyway, we've got a beehive trimmer capacitor here. And it's reading 36.2. Screw it out a bit, and it's under 5. Another capacitor. Oops, I was just pressing here, and that's the menu. You can go between automatic, inductance, capacitance, resistance, probe compensation. Anyway, for now, we'll go automatic. And the right is enter. So I'll press enter. And here we are, 160 picofarad, which is what you'd expect from a small transistor radio capacitor. We'll turn it and it goes down to 16.5. If we wanted to change the minimum capacitance a little bit, then we'd adjust the trimmers on the back. And as for the smaller half of the capacitor, it's 74 maximum. Now, this one is reading well it's the same colored bands as a 1k resistor the thousands right but it's actually an rf choke or an inductor a thousand microhenries or one millihenry let's have a look and it's very very close 990 microhenry let's go something lower that's 10 microhenry now, 10 microhenry is getting down to the typical values you might use for a tuned circuit on the input of a receiver. For memory, 4.7 microhenry resonates with 100 picofarads to give you 7 megahertz. And 10 microhenry like this would resonate with about 180 picofarad to give you 3.5 megahertz. Just some rough rules of thumb. Electrolytic capacitor, it's polarized, so are the connections on here, so we'll observe that, about 1080, which is pretty close. Uh, electrolytics have pretty wide tolerance, and in most cases it doesn't matter. 
Now I've got a little disc ceramic capacitor. Another one. It reads 10. And we get 10.9, 10.8, 10.6, We'll go with a bigger disc ceramic capacitor. 100 nanofarads, just under 96. Oh, this looks pretty old. 1,000 picofarad, 1 nanofarad, 0 0.001. And it's a bit on the low side. Still within 10% tolerance. Yep, 10%, so that's fine. One of these, I think these are monolithic capacitors, 473, so that's 0 0.047. And a little bit low. Tiny little variable capacitor here. Could be quite useful for VHF. Anyway, looks like it goes up to 4.2 picofarad, which is very small. 1.3 now, the plates aren't fully open. So this would be about a 1 to 5 picofarad variable capacitor, very small. There's a few turns on here, so we'll find this and this we've got them on the end it's slug tuned 13.8 microhenry that would be used in a lower hf circuit and of course you'll vary the inductance as you turn the ferrite in and out there's another one a few fewer turns looks like something that i round on myself for something or maybe not it's a very small inductance 0.86 microhenry could be good for higher HF lower VHF now another thing I want to try this meter is not marked as something that tests diodes but we'll try a diode on it and see what readings we get I'm on the automatic setting got the positive on the anode of the diode and the negative on the cathode or the stripe end anyway according to this it comes up as a resistor 350 I wouldn't pay too much attention to that anyway let's reverse the diode so it's reverse biased and it comes up as a capacitor 26 picofarad and not unexpected I've had experience and built projects that use silicon diodes as varactor diodes and they work quite well so you could use this to test capacitance of diodes and use them as varactors bit of theory about impedance you don't need it for basic measurements but it's nice to have impedance display gets down to imaginary numbers that's one of the capabilities this instrument has that your average LCR meter doesn't even does admittance which I don't think many people will need to measure but it's there you can select the test frequency there are three test frequencies 1 kilohertz 15 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz you need the higher frequencies for small L and C values it would be nice if there is another step at say 2 megahertz that would improve accuracy at small L and C values these pages are quite important the black areas are those where it's better than 1% it says better than 1% resolution, but I suspect it might actually be accuracy. Anyway, as you can see, at the high and low values, the accuracy tails off. At the 200 kilohertz range, it's Trini picofarad. And if we go over to inductance, it's the same thing. But looking at the bottom, the very lowest you can see is one microhenry. We've got some low value inductors here, so we'll put it on the meter and see how they measure up. 0.47, and the meter is reading about 0.42. Here's another 0.68, and it's reading 
So as you can see, it's very usable, even down to half a micro Henry. One thing to note with this instrument is not only is it an LCR meter, but it's also an impedance meter. If you're a bit hazy on AC circuit theory, as I am, impedance is pretty much irrelevant if you're just using resistors and DC current to test. But in this case, we're using AC signals of various frequencies. And if you subject components like inductors and capacitors to AC signals, then their behavior changes. And you can get all sorts of interesting measurements, which, as is mentioned in the instruction book, imaginary numbers, complex impedances, and all that. So just to prove it, we'll turn this on. And we're in automatic range, a 10 microhenry inductor. And you can see that there's a complex impedance that this presents at 200 kilohertz. 252, round 250. And this bit's the complex bit of the number. The plus means it's inductive, 12.65 ohm. That means that at 200 kilohertz, a 10 microhenry inductor is pretty close to being um, not much of a resistance at all. Whereas, if you were to get a 100 picofarad capacitor like this put in, you'll notice the plus has gone to a minus, which is capacitive reactance, and it's 7.6k. So it's quite a substantial resistance at 200 kilohertz. We don't use the word resistance because resistance is normally associated with DC measurements. When we're talking about AC, we're talking about reactants. If we went to an even smaller capacitance, then you'd expect this reactance to increase. So let's go to 10 picofarad. And yep, it's gone up to about 74K. All this is worthy of a video in its own right, but for today's purposes, I'll mention that if you want to learn about capacitive reactants, inductive reactants, how it varies with frequencies and all that, then get a meter like this that also measures impedance and experiment with various component values. Try inductors by their own, capacitors on their own, then put an inductor in series with a capacitance and then see the effects of that and then try a inductor in parallel with a capacitance and see the effects of that at different frequencies. It will be very educational and you'll learn a lot about impedances and inductors and capacitances and all that. I enjoyed playing around with the LCR45 and would recommend it to anyone who experiments with electronics and particularly radio. Thanks to Richard, G3CWI from Soda Beams for the review unit. Go to the Soda Beams website to order one.